Hello there and welcome back to the Afterlife SMP. Now in the last episode we spent our time gathering some netherite, getting all of our armor and tools upgraded to netherite and we are looking fantastic. Of course we also got a bunch of achievements while doing so and I think I'm going to start off today by getting one more. That's right, I'm going for the most important one of all, serious dedication. And for that I'm going to need, well firstly I think I'm going to need some diamonds because I need to make myself a diamond hoe. And uh, yeah, let's just dip into our savings box over here and then grab a few diamonds from our dwindling supply. The last few episodes have cost me a ton of diamonds, but I've still got a few left, so it's all right for now. Anyway, let's get busy. Let's make ourselves a diamond hoe. So sticks first and then, of course, our two diamonds. And there we go. We have a diamond hoe. Next up, I'm going to need some enchantments, so it's time to go shopping. And as you can see, I'm traveling by air because I spent most of my time in the nether last episode. And frankly, I'm quite sick of it. So I'm taking a nice leisurely flight over to the shopping district and there's a few things over there that I want to go and check out while I'm there. So the first thing I want to check out is this path over here and it is looking absolutely fantastic. I think this was built by GP, I'm not sure, but if it wasn't, um, yeah, drop me a line, let me know who actually did build it. But what I really want to come and check out here is the build a day section. And that has been revamped recently. It's been started up again. And I think, what on earth do we have here? A field of drip leaf. Now, I have no idea what this is all about. Let's just check it out. Um, okay, well, this is fun, but I have no idea why it's here or what the plans are. I'm sure I'll find out in due time. But right now... Not much that I can say about this. I'm sure there's going to be some kind of game involved here, some kind of contest perhaps, but let's get on with the program. And here we are, the Builder Day section, and there's been some stuff happening since I was last here. The last time I was here was when I joined the server actually, and uh, let's see, the Master Builders Workshop. Let's go check it out. What do we have? We have the Master Builders Info Book. Do we now? Hmm. Anyway, we do however have a few new buildings that I haven't seen before so let's go check them out and the first up is of course this mushroom house being part mushroom myself. I really, really do love this. It looks so cozy. It is absolutely beautiful. We also have this very official looking building over here. Let's see if we can figure out what it is. Uh, Okay, I suspect this is either a prison or a police station. Um, I suspect that's a portrait of an old-timey sheriff. And let's go check what we have out. Ah, police cars. Okay, so we have the police station over here. And these are looking awesome. So we've got two cop cars to chase down any perpetrators. And, uh, well, okay, well, there we go. A big sign confirming that this is indeed the Popo. Next up we have the grocery store and oh this is looking so fresh and clean. A little bit empty I must say, not much on the shelves. But we have a bakery over here. We've got the butcher area. And over here we've got, uh, let me see, okay yes 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 of course. Some fridges with milk and soda. We've also got some flowers or shall I say we have not also got some flowers over here. And then we have the checkout to the cashiers and oh yeah this is beautiful well done people i think this is a fantastic grocery store and i can't wait to actually shop in it we also have the pharmacy over here where we can come to take care of all of our bump scrapes and bruises and oh it really does give off that pharmacy vibe it looks fantastic got the dispensary back here aircon system up there keeping it nice and cool and of course shelves full of nothing at the moment also got some people working the checkout. Hello, gents. What do you have for sale? Hmm. Blank prescription pads, I see. Anyway, let's make our way over to the last area I want to go check out. And this is perhaps the most exciting of all. It is the communal pool. And I can't wait to go and take a dip. It is really, really sweltering outside. And why is the pool full of puffer fish? We've got this absolutely brilliant diving board up here and I just want to take a dip, but 
As you can see, the pool is full of puffer fish. I have no idea who's responsible for this atrocity, but they should be severely punished. Anyway, let's just go check this out here. The restrooms look nice and clean. Good to see that it's being kept up so well. And they've got ice cream. Ice cream. I want some ice cream. Or where do I... How do I buy ice cream? Is it in here? I think I broke the ice cream machine. Fortunately, I am a handyman, so I can fix the ice cream machine. Let's just pop that back up there. And it's good as new. However, I still haven't found my ice cream. And that is making me very upset. I got lured in with promises of ice cream. Yet, nothing to be found. So that is my whirlwind tour of the Builder Day area. And right now, it's time to get back to work. So let's head back to the shopping district and go get ourselves some supplies. Now, while I'm here, I wanted to come check out the recently finished shopping mall. And I must say, it is looking absolutely brilliant. Well done, Skunk and Mario. I absolutely love it. Anyway, let's go check it out and see what they have inside. And no, unfortunately, I haven't seen Dizzy. Sorry, Miney. Anyway, as you can see, this is a truly upmarket establishment. It is beautifully decorated. And I think I might be interested in renting a shop here myself. However, the escalators aren't working, which is... Uh, well, that's just poor management now, isn't it? But it makes sense seeing as there's only two shops that I know of so far that have been rented out. Both of them are by GP. And that's his first one. I'm not sure where the second one is. Hey, Skunk. How you doing, buddy? Having a good time down there? Awesome. Ah, I found GP's second shop. It is on the upper level on the other side of the mall. Quite strange that he wouldn't want them closer together, but I suppose that's his choice. Now the one thing that I absolutely love about the shopping center is the ceiling that's been painted to look like the sky. We actually have a shopping mall close to where I live IRL that has the similar thing and it is beautiful. Anyway enough ogling the shops I think it's time for me to get back home and get back to work because I still have a lot to do today. And there we go, serious dedication. We have a netherite hoe, we have netherite armor, netherite weapons, netherite tools, pretty much everything we own has been converted. And a beautiful hoe like this needs a beautiful name, so I'm gonna call it my diggy diggy hoe. So after crafting my hoe, I came for a bit of an AFK session at the gunpowder farm, and as you can see, no creepers. Which means the mob switch must be active and I have no idea who could have left it on. But let's go switch it off. Okay, so I've only had a very brief explanation of how this works, but I think it's simple enough. All I have to do is hit the button. And if the light turns off, then it should be off if I'm correct. Let's try it out. Hit the button, light goes off. We wait for the dispenser to stop clicking, which it sounds like it has. And the mobs should now be spawning. So let's get back to the farm and check it out. And indeed, we have creepers and gunpowder incoming. Which is brilliant because I'm going to be needing a lot of this stuff. So I need gunpowder for two things. First is TNT, which has many, many uses, as I'm sure you're aware. And the second is rockets, which is pretty obvious. I go through a lot of them and I think it's going to be better if I start making my own. Now, why you might ask? Well, let's go back to when I first joined the server and a stack of rockets cost you one diamond. Then came the golden future movement and the price was changed to three blocks of gold. Now, that was fair enough as there was a gold diamond exchange, which was trading three gold blocks for one diamond. So the price was essentially the same. Go away, you nasty thing. So three gold blocks or one diamond didn't make much of a difference and I didn't care too much. We then saw Dogecoin into the market, which was essentially gold, but from a different supplier. Now Dogecoin flooded the market and prices went up to where you now buy a stack of rockets for 15 gold blocks. Absolute extortion. The oligarchs and the fat cats are sitting there licking their lips. But what about us poor folk? 
us poor folk trying to scratch a living from the earth, tending to nature and not caring too much about riches. No, we are the ones who suffer, while those in the top 1% sit there counting their blocks and blocks of gold, expecting us to be the ones who sate their lust for riches. Now I have had just about enough of it, which is why I'm building a sugarcane farm, so I can become self-sufficient, self-sustaining, and make my own rockets. There's no way that I can pay those exorbitant prices for fuel, and until this economic crisis is resolved, I'm gonna have to rely on myself. So, let's start building. Now over the years I've built many, many sugarcane farms, I've evolved them to the point where I believe they are as efficient as they can be without switching over to a flying machine based farm and yet I have managed to screw this up horribly. I have laid this out completely incorrectly and short of breaking it down, there's nothing I can do. So I'm changing the design completely, making it up as I go along and hopefully this will be alright. Now the first thing I need to do is come up with a new way of triggering and harvesting the sugar cane. So I've come up with a staggered piston approach which kind of follows the original design but is going to need some serious modifications and I hope this is going to work. So the first thing we need to do is just put down all of the pistons, not like that, facing inwards. And then I need to come up with a new way of triggering these and hopefully it won't affect the efficiency. So the pistons are in, I have a plan, hopefully this is going to work, I'm just going to grab some more stone blocks, just fill in everything else around the pistons, and then we need to set up a trigger system. So we're going to fill all of this up in here, and on that side we're going to fill it up as well. And now of course the big question is, does this triggering system work? Is this going to fire all of the pistons? Let's see, I'm going to put down some redstone over here from the observer and hopefully that will power the blocks at the top here, which will in turn power the pistons. We've got the prototype ready to go. Let's grab a block and let's see if this triggers it. So I place a block there. Yeah, the pistons fire and that means the entire thing will work. We don't need to tear it all down, start again and lay it out correctly. We're just going to have a different sugarcane farm than my normal one. It's also a little bit smaller, so that gives us more space to play around with. Everything is set up, all of the observers are in place, all of the redstone is in place and this farm is ready to go. Now we just need to work on the collection system, but other than that I think we are done at the top here. I must admit I was slightly worried when I laid it out and everything was wrong. I thought I'd have to rebuild the entire thing, but as it turns out I was able to make it work. And it is looking pretty cool as well. Now the reason why I'm building it in this very specific shape is because I want to hide my sugar cane. In times of turmoil, people tend to steal things and I'm gonna make sure that they are too scared to enter here. I'm gonna disguise this as a Velociraptor pen. Everybody knows what happens if you enter a Velociraptor pen and hopefully that will be enough to deter them from coming in and grabbing all of my sugar cane. Now I've got most of the stuff set up, we're almost ready to start decorating it, but before we get there I need to set up the collection system. So the collection system is simple, we'll have some hopper minecarts running underneath the rows and then when it gets harvested it'll get picked up before it can despawn. So next I need to lay down the track for the system, which means crawling down this long dark tunnel. And we're going to start laying it down right at the end. If I can see anything, I think that's it. It should be active. Um, not 100% sure. All right, turns out it wasn't active. There we go. That one is active now. So I think it's three, then another rail, three more, and then another powered rail. And then for some odd reason, I switched to four. I don't know why. Anyway, there we go. Powered rails are powering. One more, th that's not powered I think. 
I'll go and fix that now. Let me let me just see. Um, all right. That one's working. I think the middle one over here is not powered, so I need to go back in and fix it. Let's just dig it up. Let's see. That one is powered. This one is not. So let's take it out. And I think perhaps I put it down one too soon. Yeah, there we go. It's powered now, so all good. Next, we need to make some minecart unloaders. We're doing that by placing some powered rails on top of some hoppers over here. Then we're going to place down, uh, let me see, if I got this correctly, we put down the repeaters at the end of each of these. And that'll give us an output if there's anything in the hopper. So far, so good. We'll just put one at the end of each of the hoppers. Next, we'll put down a block with a redstone torch at the end, and that torch will turn off as soon as the hopper gets something in it. Next, we add a block on top of both the redstone torch and the comparator. But not in the middle, that's where our repeater needs to go. And then finally, we add the repeaters. Now, that's going to be powered by the redstone torch. As soon as the redstone torch gets switched off, it'll stop powering the powered rail on the other end, and the minecart will stop and unload all of its stuff. And that means the unloader is done. Next thing we need to do is just make a hopper chain so that we can collect all of our sugarcane in a central location, and I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I cannot move. I claustrophobia setting in. Um break all of this let's just get out of here uh, and I think yeah we can jump over here all right let's just get in underneath I know there's a button I can press to crawl but um, I can't remember what it is to be honest but there we go we've got the start of our hopper chain and that will just take all of the sugarcane to our chest now I thought I was pretty much done with all of this and I've discovered that I have made a royal mess of things once again if you look over there you'll see that the two pistons face each other instead of being staggered and that means we have got two pistons firing directly at each other not harvesting half of the sugarcane and that means I need to get down there rip out all of these pistons and replace them in the proper configuration and this is what happens when you start just flying by the seat of your pants making stuff up as you go along I've corrected my error and I do believe that everything is now in the proper configuration. Let's see. Yeah, all of the sugarcane gets harvested as soon as we place that block. All gets collected. And for the second and hopefully final time today, I think our sugarcane farm is finally done. Let's just test this side. Yeah, that all looks pretty good. Everything is firing. Everything looks to be 100% and it's time to finish this raptor pen. Now I want this place to have thick, sturdy walls. We don't want any of the clever girls escaping. So I'm going to make this as strong as I possibly can. Reinforce all of the edges. Put some extra support in there. And then, hmm, this middle part looks to be a little weak. It's not quite pleasing to the eye. It's not very symmetrical. So I think I need to take out these iron bars. They're a weak point anyhow. And replace it with solid stone. So there we go, let's do the same on this side. And I think that is a lot better, yes. Do believe that will keep them in. Now while I was working, I discovered that we have some spies sent here from Biosyn to come and steal all of our secrets, but I'm not having any of it. I'm going to protect my interests jealously, and I'm going to take care of all of these nasty, nasty spies. Sorry boys. You have picked the wrong team. I will take you out and I will keep all of my secrets for myself. And with that done, let's pick up everything that they've dropped over here. I think we've got it all. Yeah, we've got our banner. We'll just pop that over here somewhere and we'll get rid of that nasty, nasty crossbow. But we've been making some good progress over here on the raptor pen. I've added in some glass at the top. I've added in some steel doors. And now we have a banner, which will serve as a warning to anybody who would dare steal from me. Now that we have the compound mostly complete, it's time to start adding the electric fence. Not like that. Let's just fix that up. And we're going to build a nice sturdy base for it. Next, we'll add some pylons so we can run the electric wires between them. And I think I'm going to start right here. Let's see. Too high. That might not be high enough. I think perhaps the raptors might be able to jump over that. But I think we're going to start with that. See how it goes. And perhaps if needed, 
we will raise that up a little bit more. So let's just count them out. And I'm hoping that by some happy accident we have the exact right number of blocks. But I think I already see some problems. So we might need to extend this wall a little bit. Maybe put the pylons closer together. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that doesn't quite work. So I think I'm going to need to move all of these pylons. With the pylons fixed, we need to take this fence all the way around. And for that, I'm going to need to dig out a little bit more space here. I don't want the pen to be too cramped because the poor raptors won't have space to run around and play. They'll get bored and eventually they'll start eating people. So let's give them a nice little bit of extra space over here. And then we can take this fence all the way around. And of course it makes my pylon symmetrical, which is the real reason why I'm doing this, of course. Anyway, yeah, perfect. And let's get another one set up right there. I really do think they need to go up three high. As you can see, I've already done three on the other side. And that looks to be much, much better. I don't think they'll be able to jump over this, but you never know. They are unpredictable animals and quite deadly. So most of the fence is complete. It's time to start adding the electric wires. And I'm going to do that with some chains. I'm going to... No, not that way. Okay, well, this is going to be more annoying than I thought because I need to place them like that and then find the end of each of those and just carry on doing this all the way around. I've got tons and tons of chains to place and I'm really hoping this is going to work out the way I want it because if not, I don't know exactly what I'm going to use to replace this. Anyway, we've got the chains and yes, let's just get those in there. That really does look good. I am very happy with that. So let's get the rest of them done. The fence is complete. We've got some red warning lights at the top. We've got a gate which is partially open. I don't know who forgot to close that. But we'll sort that out later. And I think so far it is looking phenomenal. Now of course we need to put up some warning signs. Because we don't want people walking in here touching this fence. It's going to be electrified of course with a lot of current running through it. And one touch might mean certain death to somebody who places his hand on it. So let's see, what are we going to say here? I think we're going to start off with a simple message. Danger, high voltage. And that should send out a clear enough message. But you know, people are really silly. They might come along and I don't like the little stars. Let's see, is there anything better I can use? Um, maybe no underscore is not going to work. Uh, let, no, not that one. There we go. That's the one I was looking for. And let's put that at the bottom as well. And yeah, that looks good. Now, as I was saying, danger high voltage might deter most people. But you know, you get those who can't resist. So let's just make it blatantly obvious to everyone. Do not touch. And after all of that, if they still come poking around grabbing these high tension wires, you know what? It's not my fault if they get fried. Anyway, there we go. Our first two warning signs are up and that looks pretty good. But I think I need to make them stand out a little bit more. So I might get some coloring, some glowing and make them absolutely awesome. And there we go. We've got one on the gate saying trespassers will be eaten. Now, if somebody ignores that, walks in here and gets eaten. Well, you know what? It's not my fault. I did warn them. Now the building looks good, the fence looks great, but this isn't the natural habitat of these fantastic animals. They need some trees, they need some leaves, some foliage to play around in, and I'm going to give them exactly that. And I'm going to start off by building a few custom trees, add some bushes, and make this place look awesome for them. The compound is absolutely teeming with plant life, the perfect place for a bunch of velociraptors to have a happy life. But right now it's time to head back to spawn because there is some great meeting happening there. Not 100% sure what it's all about, but it is something to do with the gold and diamond situation. I'd love to go and hear what everybody has to say. I might even speak a few words of my own. So let's head over there and let's see what's up. Fellow Afterlife members, today is a monumental day for all. And I know we all have our differences. But I believe that nothing is more important than everyone's voice being heard. I'm up here to discuss a topic of extreme importance. Okay? Our economy. 
As it stands, there is nothing preventing the murder of another member. As it stands, there is nothing preventing the defacement of a person's shop. And as it stands, there is nothing preventing a person from abusing our economic system for personal gain. And out of fear, a new currency has sprouted up on the... This guy. New... What? <laughs> Has uh, sorry, on the server. Grandpa is uh, he's, you know <laughs> sleeping back here. All right, hold on, let me let me redo that line because some people weren't listening. <laughs> Out of fear, a new currency has sprouted up on the server. You know what this is? It's Dolge Coin, which intends to destroy the value Ooh, of gold yay. now too. <gasps> no. Mm, uh? Yeah, I know, I know. That is why today I announce something resounding. No. It's not the proposal of a new currency. And no, I don't want to overthrow our current government. Please, Tink, will you dig the blocks? Right. Sir, yes, sir. Um... The, the blocks. Right. Tink, the, the blocks. You know the, the mm. blocks. And right about here is where I started getting suspicious. Blocks, this guy. Okay, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like these, this is these ones, right? It's supposed to be dramatic. It's this. Right, yes, okay, cool. Got, got it. Anyways. Okay, <clears throat> I got lost. this is the pit. Inside <gasps> the pit lies <gasps> searing hot lava. Oh, that's oh, right. Oh. <laughs> that is right. So you, you probably don't want to jump down there. It's searing hot lava. Anyways, in my hand, I have 28 diamond blocks. And in my other hand, I have 52 <gasps> gold blocks. These are all that I have to my name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my God, he's got Everything else has been given away or used. Right? Is he the messiah? Here, so, here. Let the future <gasps> of afterlife oh, be he did it. bright. <laughs> Lisa, no, surrender Naeem. your valuables. The golden future that I dreamed about may just oh, be dead. God. But the oh, beautiful sorry, future sorry. I see with every one of you is still hey, my very chair. alive. It was then time for Skunk, one of the masterminds behind Dogecoin, to have his say. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I think we need to just, we need to settle this. Okay, we need, we need peace. We, I agree, we need peace. That's but I think, true. I think sacrificing our valuables is not the answer. I too had to speak out against the exorbitant fuel prices. Is this on? <clears throat> it's yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, we can hear it's you. On, it's on. Personally, ladies and gentlemen, I don't really care whether I'm paying gold, diamonds, whatever. It really doesn't matter to me. The problem is that every shop I've seen operating in gold is exorbitantly expensive. Prohibitively expensive. <clears throat> Therefore, I shall be sticking to my diamonds for now. Until the prices come down, I shall be working in oh. diamonds. Oh. Uh, to that point, to that point, fault. to that point, if anyone <laughs> wants something that is for sale in the shop, that they're only pricing in gold, uh, there's a shop coming soon that will sell those same items for diamonds. Uh oh. Good, good, like, oh. good one. That's a good <laughs> yes. Hit them hard. And finally, it was time for Jay, our mayor, to step in and take control. Well, lady and gentlemen, your voices have been heard. I understand that you feel like the government has not acted appropriately these past several months and have left you guys blindsided with inaction. Well, today marks a historic moment in the development of our great community. I am proud to announce the official ratification of the Afterlife Concord, a guiding document that will serve as the cornerstone of governance, commerce, and community within our realm. This concord enshrines the fundamental rights of every citizen while ensuring the prosperity, stability, and security of afterlife for generations to come. And it was round about then that I decided to come home and feed the raptors. And it's a good thing I did because just after I left, some shenanigans started going down. There was an explosion, people died, and I'm just glad I got out of there when I did. So is this gonna help solve all our problems? Bring financial stability to the server and peace for all? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But I have a raptor pen and I love it. If we look here, we see 
Danger high voltage. Do not touch. All of the important warning signs are up. Trespassers will be eaten, of course. Over here we have severe danger. Do not enter. Around this side, there's a few more. Another high voltage sign. And the most important one of all, right over here. Don't dead. Open inside. And with all of that done, let's go take a quick look at the beautiful habitat we've built for our clever girls. As you can see, plenty of trees, bushes, ferns everywhere. It is looking lush and beautiful. But the question is, do my velociraptors love it as much as I do? I'm not entirely sure, but we could always mosey over there and go ask the clever girl hiding in the bushes. You can see her eyes peering out at us from over there. All in all, I think the raptor pen looks absolutely fantastic and hopefully the danger it presents will keep others at bay and my sugarcane will stay safe for another day, guarded by nature's most perfect killing machines. But that, ladies and gents, is unfortunately all we have time for today. I really do hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave a like if you did and if you want to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But this is Fungosaurus Rex saying, until next time, beautiful people, stay awesome. Bye-bye.